All right, so let's talk about critical path analysis. So we've got a network here and we're gonna to have to do forward scanning and backward scanning. Now, from my experience, I personally believe that every textbook and almost everything that I've seen personally overcomplicates this whole process. I've figured out a way that makes this way easier to understand. So all you have to do, all you have to remember, ignore forward scanning, backward scanning, this and that. This is all you've got to remember. The longer, the longest possible way forward and the longest possible way backward. What I mean by that is, so we're always going to start with zero, zero. Now, if I was to go forward towards A, it's going to be a four because there's only one possible way I can go there. So the longest possible way that I can go from my start point to the node that's next to A is four. I don't have any other option. In the same way that if I went to B, it's got to be six. There's no other option. And then along the bottom here, if I was to continue, six plus nine is 15. And then after doing activity D, because the only possible way to go to activity D is to go that way, it's going to be eight, right? Four plus four is eight. Then towards the top, once activity C is done, four plus three is seven. Now, this is where we've got some options in this cell. So we could go three and eight, which is along the top, which equals 11, or we could go four and five along the bottom, which is from D to G. Now remember, we wanna choose the longest way possible. So three plus eight is 11, four plus five is nine. So we're gonna go the three plus eight way, which means I'm gonna do seven plus eight, which gives me 15. So that's the way that we have to go. We're going the longest possible way forward. Now, this next box here, or this next node, we would call it, we've got some options. We've got three different options, actually. We can go along the bottom, we can go along the middle, so which would be A, D, G, or we can go along the top, which would be A, C, F, and I. Now, remember, we wanna choose the longest possible way. So the longest possible way in this case would be six, nine, and seven, because six plus nine plus seven is gonna be 20, is gonna be 22. So if we had have gone A, C, F, and I, that's gonna be four plus three plus eight plus three, which is gonna be seven plus 11, which is 19. So that's not the longest possible way. If we went the middle direction, so four, four, five, and three, that's gonna be eight plus eight, which is 16. So that's not the longest possible way. So we're going the longest possible way, which means we have to go from B to E to H. Therefore, we're gonna have a 22 in that box. And then obviously to get to the end, there's only one option. So 22 plus 24, sorry, so 22 plus two, is 24. Now at the end, the start slash the end value will be the same. So we've got 24 and 24 at the end. Now we're gonna begin backward scanning. And backward scanning, we're going the longest possible way backwards. So obviously there's one option for the first part, it's gonna be 22. And when we go downward, there's only one option because there's only one path going that way. So we're gonna do 22 take seven, which is 15. And then same, if we keep going along, we've just got one option. So 15 take nine is six. Now, going this way, up the top, uh, we've only got one option, right? So 22 take away three is 19. And then once again, we've only got one option going backwards this way. So 19 take away five is 14. Then we've only got one option going back. So 19 take away eight is 11. Now, here we've got some options. We could either go five and four, or we could go eight and three. But remember, we wanna choose the longest way backwards. The longest way backwards would be going eight and three. So 11 take away three, 11 take away three is eight. So a little bit of a typo, that should be an eight in that cell, not a nine. So something important to remember is with each of these nodes, what these represent, on the left, it's the earliest start time, and on the right, it's the latest start time. So that should be four and eight, right? 
So what that means is that for activity C or activity D, they could technically start four minutes late, not five minutes, that's a typo. They could start four minutes late and it wouldn't really interrupt anything. So if they rocked up and they completed the task three minutes late or four minutes late, that's okay because it's not gonna interrupt the whole activity. Now let's talk about the critical path. So the critical path is a path where there's no float time, which means there's no space in between the earliest start time and the latest start time. So notice along this critical path, all of the nodes have the same number. So B, E, H, and J would be considered the critical path. 